Steven's team composition, it's really good, but you always have to ask, do I want to bring it because there's a Groudon and Groudon's yep. just such a big threat. And that's the that's the issue. A Theraform does not like facing off against those fire type Pokemon, but if you manage to eliminate them, it can be super annoying. Yeah. And I think that's one of the, the things that people really feared about Theraform in last in previous formats. Yeah, absolutely. So if you're if you're Christian at this point, looking at your team, what Pokemon do you want to bring against Big B? Yeah, I mean, that's a good question. I think, first of all, a Weavile is actually one of the most important ones. It has the ability to Ice Kill Crash or go for an Ice type attack onto Salamence. You have Fake Out Pressure, you have maybe Faint for the Smeargle, which could actually really help out if uh, you are fearing turn one plays from Smeargle. Knock Off onto Xerneas is always a potential play to get rid of its Geomancy right from the start. So Xerneas, is, uh, I think Weavile can help out a lot. Uh, Ferrothorn, like we said, you know, does have that potential if well protected, but it's really going to be how does Christian deal with Steven's route on. That's exactly right. And guys, we're just about to jump into round six here at the World Championships live in San Francisco. Christian is going to be leading off with that Weevil and the Xerneas, and Steven Morioka is going to be using Kangaskhan and Smeargle. Yeah, so, you know, Kang Smeargle, something that we've seen for a while now. Oh, yes. 2014, 2015, and 2016. Well, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And also, those guys pair together so well. They do. The natural synergy there is definitely uh, potent. But the thing here is, there are fake out wars, right? Kangaskhan can fake out, Weavile can fake out. Uh, Smeargle actually technically yep. could fake out too. So, question is, does your Kangaskhan stay in regular form if you're expecting a, a fake out from Weavile if you're inner focused? Do you want to Mega Evolve? You have to be afraid of the Xerneas Geomancy. But Smeargle here, of course, those of the to Dark Void, so uh, we could see Fake Outs being traded turn one, and that probably would put Christian in more of an advantage, but uh, Smeargle, we also don't know the item. For example, if it's Choice Scarf, that could give him a huge leg up. Yeah, exactly, and we're going to see a Mega Evolution coming out from Steven's Kangaskhan here, so not choosing to stay in its basic form to keep that inner focus ability. Instead, he's probably going to um, try and launch some sort of attack here. We've got the Fake Out coming out onto the Smeargle, doesn't want to take a Dark Void on the, to Christian's side of the field. Xerneas going straight for that Geomancy here. We noticed that Kangaskhan hasn't gone for a fake out, so we could be seeing some big damage coming out from uh, Steven's side of the field. Here goes the Geomancy, and boy, I, I've seen it so many times, but I love this animation. It's just so glorious. <laughs> I'm just going to keep saying it. We've got the special attack, we've got the special defense, we've got the special the speed going up now, both by all by two stages, and a return coming out from Kangaskhan. It's going to do some considerable damage to that Xerneas. It's going to leave it with well under uh, a half HP. Smeagol is going to flinch, and we can see the Moody. And an evasion increase. That's always a scary one with the defense decrease. So uh, that evasion is actually a big deal here. Uh, that's really, really scary on Christian's end. And, you know, I think if you're Christian, you're okay with that turn one, but there are already some mind games here. I think uh, Steven maybe wanting to play the 50-50 game where it's like, okay, I can predict you to either go for a Dazzling Gleam, and as a result, I'll go for a Wide Guard and just return knock you out. Uh, or maybe I predict you to move Blast and I'll switch something out and go for a Dark Void or an attack. But the, mo the Moody here on Smeargle uh, does allow it to be a little bit more dodgy. And that does exactly. make things scary for Christian because now you want to play a little bit safer. But, you know, can you really play safe when your Xerneas has already taken over 50% of damage? you got to respect the Smeargle. That's you the do. thing. As soon as it gets a, a, a boost like speed or evasion, now it becomes a real issue. Absolutely. And with Xerneas at such a low health, as you said, Aaron, it's kind of Christian's in a bit of a situation where he needs to really think out what he wants to do. Kangaskhan is now going to leave the field for Steven's side. For Steven's side, we're going to bring in Bronzom here. So how is Weavile going to interact? We've got Dazzling Gleam coming out oh. and the avoid. That is not good. We've got Smeagle still on the side of the field. Bronzong's got about two thirds of his HP left. A big icicle crash coming out. Is it going to go target the Bronzong? It oh, is. Oh no! Not a good turn for Christian. And so Bronzong doesn't take too much damage from that icicle crash. And here goes the Dark Void. It's hitting one Pokemon. Which Pokemon will be asleep? There goes the Weavile. Will the Xerneas, will the Xerneas be able to make it? Oh, both Pokemon are asleep. Poor turn for Christian. <laughs> that is a, that's a hard break. I think that's a so oh. and a speed increase. Oh my gosh. So. I think that what Steven did well was that he got the free damage knowing he had Bronzong in the back. However, Bronzong is incredibly weak to Weavile there. If that Dazzling gl uh, Gleam connects with Smeargle, then Steven's still in a really awkward position. He either has to bring the Kangaskhan back in, and that Kangaskhan most likely will just get knocked out, you know, maybe get a fake out, but then Weavile and Xerneas are both such strong offensive threats. So yep. uh, that was a really, really unfortunate miss on the Smeargle there because of the fact that uh, if you don't miss that attack, then you knock out Smeargle, and you're in a very good position. Now Xerneas and Weavile are absolutely useless for this turn. Neither of them even have the potential to wake up right now. Yep. So Christian is going to have to decide, do I want to stay in or switch out? And uh, switching out is, you know, a tough uh, option to make because Smeargle could just stop point. We actually but, see Smeargle oh, wow. switch out. I mean, I would have just gone for the Dark Void button in case of a switch in there, but 
Stevens. Uh, Stevens actually going to go on the offensive here. He's going to bring in a Groudon. Groudon obviously going to undergo Primal Reversion, getting the Desolate Land ability, which uh, will bring out the Sun, powering up Fire-type attacks, but also drying up Water-type attacks. But I don't think he actually has to worry too much from Christian's side of the field. Absolutely, yeah. So I... we've got one turn of sleep left for Xerneas and for uh, Weavile. They haven't taken any sleep turns yet, so they've got a guaranteed turn here. Will Bronzong be going straight for a Gyro Ball onto the Xerneas? No, it will be going for the Trick Room, so we're actually just setting up for the long game here. Yeah, and I think that's the safest play possible from Steven. You know you're already a little bit behind, so uh, behind in the sense that you know the first couple of turns weren't as great for you, yep. uh, but now you have full four turns of Trick Room, and there's no better time to set up Trick Room when Weavile and Xerneas literally cannot do any damage to you. So both of these Pokemon can wake up this next turn, but even if they do, Steven's still in a phenomenal position. Yep, so Bronzong, obviously a great partner for Groudon because it can use Skill Swap to uh, get the Levitate onto it if it's running that, but more importantly, it can get the Gravity up so that it can use Precipice Blades without fearing the accuracy miss. Yep, and so I think now Bronzong, like you said, m most likely will want to go for that Gravity, so I could just Gyro Ball and go for a Precipice Blades. Of course, you might be a little bit afraid of the fact that Weavile could wake up if it has a Focus Sash yep. and a you know, Precipice Blades. Uh, we'll be able to do a lot of damage, maybe not knock it out. Weavile could get a knockoff in return on that Bronzong, but uh, still, I think Steven is in a much better position than what it looked like two turns ago, where it looked like the game was almost over. So there goes that gravity that you were talking about, Aaron. So gravity obviously increasing the, um, the ability to hit moves in uh, with, with lower accuracy. And there goes the big precipice blade coming out from Steven Morioka. It's going to do big damage to the Zerni. It's going to knock it out. And there goes the focus sash onto Weavile, leaving it one HP. Will it be able to wake up and do some big damage back to this Bronzo? Does wake Ooh, up. There it is, and there goes a the knockoff. It's going to go onto the Bronzon slot. It's going to pick up the knockout there, so luckily managing to get the gravity up just before it got knocked out. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you're Christian there, and it actually reveals the Aqua Barrier, which is good information as well. Now, you do pick up a knockout there, but there still are three full turns of Trick Room you have to deal with, and this Groudon still hasn't taken any damage whatsoever, and gravity's up. Yeah. So, Steven managing to get his pieces in order just before they started falling. Yep. So, we've got Trick Room up, three turns left, gravity up and Smeagol back on the field. What better position could he be in? Yeah, the Salamence here is a big deal because you do get that Intimidate, but I'm not sure if it's enough right now because of the fact that Groudon's Presbyte's Blade still most likely is a two hit. Maybe a three hit knockout, but uh, the Smeargle here is also able to just start Void. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> Steven's managed to put himself in a pretty, in a pretty good position here. If he manages to get the Dark Void onto both of these Pokemon, um, he will be able to have a free turn to start spamming Precipice Blades. Yeah, uh, maybe uh, you know, a double miss on Dark Void could put uh, Christian back into this game, but uh, that invasion increase was so huge, just being able to turn the momentum completely with that Dark Void. Yep, and this is why Smeargle has so many shenanigans up its sleeve. <laughs> so we see a Protect coming out from Salamence there. We see a Faint coming out from Weavile, making um, making use of that priority attack before it gets knocked out. Oh, and a Swords Dance from Steven there. Just uh, adds a bit of gravy to the damage that he's been doing <laughs> with those Precipice Blades. And there goes the Dark Void. So Salamence obviously protecting itself from that, but Weavile's going to take a nap. And yeah, I mean, that's even better for Steven uh, now at this point. You do have your Groudon at plus one, and you know, Precipice Blades is still up. Accuracy increasing oh as well. God. So uh, Smeargle just doing Smeargle things yeah. in BGC 2016. And if you're Christian, you know, you have to not get frustrated, and that's so hard to do against Smeargle in this format. It's why a lot of players dislike facing Smeargle, because it, you know, sometimes that first booty roll is all it takes for things to spiral out of control. Hashtag play Pokemon, hashtag <laughs> just Smeargle things. So um, yeah, so Steven obviously in a very good position right now. Weavile taking its first turn of sleep, was using Faint, you can tell by the uh, the priority bracket there. Here comes the Precipice Blades, will it pick up a knockout? No, it doesn't pick up a knockout onto Salamence. Critical hit on the Weavile, which I'm sure mattered from the 1 HP, but with, now it is plus one because of the Intimidate from Salamence. Just going for a straight up Dark Void again, Salamence now being asleep, and Steven is really making the most of these Trick Room turns. Absolutely, I think he set up Trick Room really well. And basically, you know, once again, this all came to the evasion increase and the Trick Room being able to go up because Trick Room is difficult if you are, you're facing against healthy Pokemon, right? But Steven was like, no, you know, I just put both of your Pokemon to sleep. I'm just going to set up Trick Room immediately, get my Grotta on it in the best position possible and go from there. Uh, we did see Christian go for a double protect with Salamence last week. He didn't get it, so he can't go for a protect with both Salamence and Grotta. That should uh, expire. Trick Room should expire. But uh, then you still have to fear the wide guard, obviously, from Samir Goal. 
So we're going to see Groudon hitting the field for Christian, undergoing Primal Reversion, two Primal Groudon facing off against each other now. And so with Trick Room coming to an end, how is Steven going to be able to eke this one out? He's facing off against two Pokemon on Christian's side of the field. Salamence still has one turn of sleep left to go. So uh, he's in the Pokemon advantage, but will Christian be able to do something here when Trick Room ends? Yeah, I actually forgot. I think Salamence actually fell asleep just last turn, so there's nothing really that yeah. can happen now. Unless you have an Earth Power Groudon and uh, you kind of play the mind games where yep. Smeargle thinks you have, uh, where he thinks you have Press Displays and goes for a wide card and you can outspeed and Earth Power, but then you still have to deal with the Pokemon in the back. So we've just about to uh, go back into this turn, and we're going to see the Protect coming out from Groudon there. Doesn't want to take any unnecessary damage while he's waiting for Trick Room to leave. So Salamence taking its first turn to sleep here, and Steven's side of the field, there goes the Wide Guard. So he has that prepared in case Groudon wants to attack with Precipice Blades, and we're going to see the Precipice Blades from Steven's side of the field. Nothing happening there, so going to hit the Salamence, going to knock it out. So Christian down to just one Pokemon, but Groudon's a pretty good Pokemon to be left with. It is, but I don't think it's honestly enough here because of the wide guard from Smeargle. That's why wide guard, like we were talking before, this match is so good. Smeargle gets another evasion increase just to add insult to injury there, and I think Steven should be able to close this one out. Uh, I don't think that a Groudon can really solo through at this point, even though it's such a good Pokemon. So Smeargle, once again, doing some fantastic stuff in VGC 16. <laughs> it's just... With the power of Moody is incredible, isn't it? It is. And I think it's something that, when paired with Dark Void, puts up some really intense pressure on everyone that's facing it. Right. And there goes the wide guard again. A flamethrower coming out from Christian's side of the field. Gonna take out that Smeargle, so Smeargle will not be able to get any more Moody shenanigans whilst it's up. And here comes the Precipice Blades from Steven's Groudon. It's gonna do some big damage to this Groudon. It's gonna take it out in one hit. That's incredible. So we can see from the uh, HP stat of Christian's that it's probably built a lot faster, a more special attack orientated, more speed version. So maybe even if it had, um, maybe even if, it, even if it had Earth power, it might not pick up the one hit KO. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Flamethrower is an interesting move there, right? Because it reveals that it is at least somewhat specially oriented. Normally you see eruption, but uh, Flamethrower there, of uh, maybe in implying it that it could have Earth power, even yeah. if it doesn't. Like that's rare to see that uh, that attack. So that's pretty cool to see, and it's like a testament to how different variants can be built. But uh, I think if you're Christian there you can't be too upset you know the game was stolen away from you from that moody boost from that double dark void connection but i thought uh, he played the early game really well and i thought he was able to just get his zernius into a position to sweep i do think he has to be a little bit aware of the fact that zernius has to deal with bronzong and that even if you get that free geomancy boost that all it takes is bronzong to come and maybe set up trick room or uh, you know get an attack off but i think weavile zernius is such a strong lead from christian and uh, steven might have to you know try to figure out something else because he was able to win that solely off smear goals boot, uh, moody yeah, so obviously one of the things that we've got to bear in mind is in best of three formats, if you lose the first match, it puts a lot of pressure on you to make some sort of adjustment. It does. So you've got to, um, you've really got to think about what you want to do going into the next game and not focus on the loss that you had. Right. And I think that's one of the things um, that if you're a, a beginner player or someone who's looking to improve their game, making sure that you can store that loss in the back of your mind, take the best bits from it, and move forward into the rest of the, the best of three. It's a really, really important thing. Absolutely. So we'll see how both players really change up their strategies. I think Christian might honestly want to go with the same composition again because the thing is that Weavile just is so strong against Bronzong and against Salamence and uh, Xerneas obviously is always a threat too and we, you know, the Weavile Xerneas lead worked out quite nice against Kangaskhan Smeargle so uh, because Weavile really threatens that one Pokemon that Xerneas doesn't like playing against which is that Bronzong it helps out a lot. Yeah so once again for you guys Christian's team off, off camera for you, but it's going to be Salamence, Xerneas, Ferroform, Groudon, Zapdos, and Weavile. And Steven Morioka's team is going to be Salamence, Groudon, Xerneas, Bronzong, Smeargle, and Kangaskhan. And we are just about to jump back into this Game 2, Round 6 of the World Championships here in San Francisco, California. So the leads from each team are going to be Weavile and Groudon coming out for Christian, so a slight change there. And once again for Steven, we're going to have the Smeargle-Kangaskhan combination. Yeah, Kangaskhan Smeargle, always so scary because you literally actually never know what's going to happen because a lot of it is actually dependent on that first booty boost. And uh, of course, you know, it's a lot of the times that's why players want to pressure down Smeargle, but if you fake out or attack into a spiky shield or a king shield or even a protect, right, then uh, you lose a lot of momentum here. And it's even harder because Kangaskhan fake, can fake out. So once again, we could just see fake outs being traded. There's just too many options. There that's are. the That's the thing to take away about Smeargle. There are so many options and it makes you worry especially if it's paired up, again, paired up with a restricted legendary Pokemon or a Mega Evolution, because you're like, okay, usually I'd just be able to pair down against this Mega Evolution or the restricted legendary Pokemon, pick up a key knockout, but with Smeargle there, you're just like, oh, but if I do that, 
it's just going to punish me. Exactly. And that's, it's just harsh. You always have to be aware of the fact that he could get a Dark Void off. And that last game, you know, because Dark Void was able to connect and it was the last move on the field, neither of Christian's Pokemon were able to even, they didn't even have a chance to wake yep. up for one full turn. So that allowed Steven to get the Trick Room setup he was looking for. And here we go. We're going to have a Mega Kangaskhan hitting the field. So trading either Inner Focus or Scrappy Ability for that Parental Bond, which we've seen so much ever since it was introduced back in Pokemon X and Pokemon Y. There's the Y. faint. Ooh. Ooh, straight away a faint onto the Smeargle here. He's going to go for an Eruption, Whoa. looking to take out the Smeargle. An aggressive play from Christian here, really changing it up. Is it going to pick up the knockout? Of course it is. And Kangaskhan is now left with one third of its HP left. And a power up punch is going to go onto that Weavile. It's going to take it down to the focus, oh, just above the focus sash. It's going to pick up the knockout here. And we've got a plus two Kangaskhan. That's good. Yeah, that is really good. And you know, that's why Weavile with Faint is really nice. And you know, I'm impressed that Christian was able to call that correctly because of the fact that like, Kangaskhan always threatens with fake out. So, you know, Steven could have just faked out the ground on him. Sure, uh, you know, you get some little damage off onto Smirkle, but then the Kangaskhan mega evolves and it's now faster onto yep. Groudon, and you've done that fake out damage. So, but I think if I'm Steven, I'm still okay with this position because my Kangaskhan is uh, at plus two now. But of course, Christian, if he does bring that Salamence, is able to just uh, get the Intimidate and be able to knock it out. And we do see Salamence. Yeah, there it is. Here. So as you called it, Aaron, it's going to hit the field now, giving the Intimidate onto both Bronzong and Kangaskhan. So Kangaskhan now only plus one attack. Um, so yeah, for, uh, for Christian, a very mi a big mix up in uh, how he wanted to play that first turn really went for an over-aggressive play to get rid of that Smeargle, which caused him so much trouble in round one. Yeah, absolutely. So normally uh, you would think, okay, Salamence can just Hyper Voice, Groudon can just Eruption, or go for a Fire-type attack, and that should be over. But we actually saw the Aka Berry on the Bronzong last yep. turn, and that's kind of a big deal. Uh, it means that could potentially survive the Fire-type attacks, and if Steven can set up Trick Room, then he can bring in his Groudon and just go for the Gravity kind of setup again. But Christian's definitely in a far better position this game. So we see the Mega Evolution coming out from Salamence there, and we're going to go see a Sucker Punch onto that Groudon. It's going to do a fair amount of damage, leaving it with just over half its HP. A Hyper Voice coming out. It's going to do some good damage to Kangaskhan, picking up the Knockout, and Bronzong's going to be taking a little bit of chip damage there. A critical hit on both Pokemon. <laughs> Not cool, but we're gonna see what Bronzong's gonna do here. We can set up the, tri the trick room. We're gonna, oh, there we go, Okaberry. Gonna, gonna try and hope, hope it survives with this uh, flamethrower in the sun. And wow, that didn't do that much damage at all. It didn't, and it is able to get the trick room up. So, you know, Steven is able to successfully kind of get what he was going for. That was probably the best case scenario for him, but it's still a little bit tricky because of how bulky or how healthy uh, the Salamence uh, is at this point. Uh, you know, it can take a precipice blades. However, Groudon is really healthy too on Steven's end. So, uh, you know, that Aukaberry coming in really clutch. If he didn't have that Aukaberry, then that Bronzong Mage Trigger never goes up and Christian immediately wins the game. Instead, we see that that Aukaberry is used specifically for that fire type attack. Yep. And uh, now, you know, Steven's actually not in the worst position. So he can go for the gravity and go for a precipice blades. Uh, it might actually come down to whether Salamis has a way to knock out Bronzong. You know, a uh, double edge, you know, I feel like would come close, but wouldn't do enough. And mm. if Christian has Kyogre in the back, then Bronzong can just go for a skill swap and get the sun back up. So here I think your play might be to just go for the gravity press Miss Blades. Uh, but yeah, it really comes down to it. Will Salamence have a way to knock out Bronzong? Maybe he has a key fire type attack that we haven't seen yet either. Unfortunately, uh, Christian doesn't have a Kyogre. He has the Xerneas as his oh, second wrist. Yeah. So yeah. there's yeah. not even a way to get rid of this desolate land. Right, right. And so if Bronzong sets up the gravity and goes for the press of his blades, um, he could be in a, Steven could be in a really good position. Absolutely, yeah. I think uh, <laughs> mistake in the team composition, but uh, we do see a Protect come out from the Groudon to try to stay on the field as long as possible. Yeah, so there's the Protect coming out from Groudon. We see the gravity here. So Steven setting himself up to pull out some big knockouts. Uh, Salamence losing the flying type immunity to uh, Precipice Blades. And we're going to see how much damage this is going to do to the Salamence. So, oh, that's quite a lot. It goes just under half HP and the double edge coming out. Is it going to pick up the, the knockout onto... Oh, no, it's not target Groudon. Yeah, maybe. I, I don't understand why he went that way. I thought he might pair down against the Bronzong. Yeah, I'm trying to understand that. I mean, it would come down to what Christian's last Pokemon is, but now it's a kind of weird position because now Groudon's guaranteed to press his blades and Bronzong's still healthy. It looks like it's actually switching out though. Maybe so. he's saving, maybe he's just trying to get as much damage onto the Groudon as possible for when Trick Room ends and right. bring his Groudon back in to pick up, the, pick up the extras. Right. So Xerneas is now going to hit the field and we're going to see Salamence protect now. So Christian trying to stall out this Trick Room, make sure that it doesn't uh, affect him too much. And there's a Hypnosis coming out onto the Xerneas on the switch in. You can see from Christian's face, he's not enjoying how that happened. <laughs> So Precipice Blade is coming out as well. So Xerneas taking a nap instantly as soon as it hits the field. And I'm going to take some big Precipice Blades damage as well, leaving it just under half HP. 
not great position for Christian. Yeah, not at all. I think this game is essentially over unless Salamence can maybe salvage a double protect. That's the only chance really I could see something even being pulled off because that Xerneas falling asleep means that I can't wake up on this first turn to uh, sleep. And so Groudon's guaranteed to knock out either on the Xerneas or a Groudon if it switches in. And if Salamence doesn't pull the double successfully, then it's just going to be a double knockout instantly and the game's over. So yeah, you can see from Steven's end that he really needs to set up this trick room and then uh, get the gravity up as well. And that's the main function of his team. He really enjoys being under trick room, getting those big, powerful spread type attacks off. Right, actually, I just realized that since two turns of trick room have gone, I misspoke there. I think uh, you actually maybe just sacrifice both of your Pokemon here and then you get the free switch and back on. And then to protect and then once, once that goes, oh, we've got, we've got the protect coming out from Steven's Groudon there. And we're going to see Xerneas taking its first turn of sleep. So um, you can imagine that Bronzong might want to go for a Gyro Ball here. Salamence fails to pick up the um, protect there, and he's going to take a Hypnosis instead. So that's interesting. I think what Steven has realized is that Trick Room is expiring. And instead of actually allowing Christian to get the free switch in, he's going to play a little bit more conservatively and just put things to sleep. And I actually really like that uh, because, uh, you know, Trick Room is ending, I believe, this turn. Yep. That's a big deal now because, uh, you know, the, the goal right now for Christian is, like you said, to uh, get Groudon back in safely and pick up the knockout into Groudon. At least force a 50-50 where it's like, okay, I can either knock out your Groudon or your Bronzong. You have to make the correct call, and you know, whether you protect it or not. But Steven here not allowing the free switch, and Xerneas could wake up here. Um, kind of curious, you know, how much can Xerneas do to Bronzong? Uh, no switch outs here either. And a, a Hypnosis going into an already sleeping Xerneas there. Precipice Blade is going to knock out both of these Pokemon. So we've got a free switch in for Christian as Trick Room ends, but is he going to be able to make the most of it? Yeah, I think it uh, should end here, right? Yeah, there we go. So it comes down to a 50-50. Uh, do you attack the Groudon or do you attack the Bronzong? Goes Groudon Protect. Uh, because if Groudon protects and you attack into it, Bronzong she's able to put you to sleep and then it's game over yep. and vice versa. But uh, yeah, I mean, I thought it was over for Christian there for a second, but you know, he played that trick room kind of really well and now it comes down to, and that's why he actually did go for the double edge onto Groudon earlier, realizing, okay, I can count this properly enough to make sure like Groudon comes back in just at the right time. So I think Gyro Ball actually would have been a better play on Steven's end instead of going for the Hypnosis earlier, just to pick up a knockout, force that Groudon to go for a double protect instead of one protect. So uh, now Groudon's just gonna go for either a fire type attack or a precipice blades. Let's see if Christian calls it correctly. So yeah, Christian making the the mental adjustment from the game one, understanding that Smiggles a big gets issue. It. There we go. Precipice blades onto both those Pokemon. Is it gonna pick up the knockout on Groudon? It does. Christian managing to take the game here. So we're going to go one and one. Gonna be a game three, Aaron. Yeah, and it wasn't even a 50-50 uh, because gravity oh, was yeah, up. Of course, yeah, all yeah, you yeah. need to do is press his blades there. So uh, Christian actually managed that really, really nicely. It looked like it was over there. And uh, in fact, all he had to do was count his trick room turns correctly and use Steven's gravity against him. And that's the thing. We've we've seen that Christian in that game prioritized the Smeagol. When, okay, I don't want to deal with this anymore. I don't want to get some moody boost going up the opposite way to what I want. I'm just going to get rid of it off the field. And when Steven was like, okay, we'll go back to plan. We'll go back to plan A. We'll get the trick room up. It doesn't matter about Smeagol. He made sure that he managed to stall out in enough turns and get himself into a position where Groudon can come in, be the fastest Pokemon, and deal some big damage. Yeah, I think that turn one from Steven is just what was really questionable because Kang has gone up and not to go for a fake out. So he was willing to just take a ton of damage right from the start and, uh, you know, maybe making a really hard read there. But uh, he had, Steven had to have expected the Salamence in the back. And sometimes, you know, maybe you lose that foresight and you think, oh, I'm at plus two where I get my boost with Xerneas or Kangaskhan. I'm in a really good position. But then, like, the Pokemon that directly counters that because it's taking damage now comes in. So uh, that Salamence was able to put in a lot of work. And despite Steven setting up Trick Room and kind of clawing back into it, uh, Christian was able to count his Trick Room turns perfectly. And as a result, actually just get the Precipice Blades. It wasn't even a 50 50 there because gravity hadn't ended yet. And this is one of the great things about VGC is that if you think several turns ahead, you can really plan out your strategy and focus down on what you think your opponent will be doing and plan accordingly. Absolutely. So guys, we're just going to go through the teams once again. Christian Milligan on the left-hand side of your screen. You can't see his Pokemon, but they are Salamence, Xerneas, Ferroform, Groudon, Zapdos, and Weavile. And for Steven, we're going to see, see Sal uh, Salamence, Groudon, Xerneas, Bronzong, Smeargle, and Kangaskhan. So if you're Steven, do you change anything up, Aaron? I think you might have to be a little bit scared now that Weavile showed the feint. You know that that game one most likely was going to be won by Christian unless you don't get that moody boost. And so Smeargle, it's a very scary Pokemon. It can win you games, but uh, you know, that first game just saved by Moody and that second game, it was instantly knocked out. And that eruption on Christian's end is also a big deal because it's 100% accurate, does so much damage. Steven could have mitigated that first turn by either going for an attack onto Groudon straight away, for example. Fake out. Exactly. Uh, or even just going for you know a normal type attack 
Tech to do as much damage off as possible. And uh, instead, we didn't see either of those. No return, no big onto the Kangaskhan. So as a result, Groudon just was able to pick up so much free damage. Yeah, so we're actually going to jump back into game three of round six of Swiss here at the World Championships in San Francisco. And we're going to see the Weevil Groudon combination coming out from Christian once again. And Steven's not changing things up either. He's gone for the Smeagol Kangaskhan once more. Yeah, I think if you're Christian, though, you like this a uh, little bit more. Uh, the interesting thing is the faint kind of mind games, right? Like, Steven could fake out Weavile, expecting faint. And if you do that and you call correctly, then Smeargle gets a Dark Void off. So now it's like, now you know you weave, you're, the Weavile has faint, you predict it. Uh, because he could, you know, if Smeargle tries to play safe and go for a spiky shield and gets fainted, then it loses its potential focus ash, and that's also a big deal in this kind of matchup. Which is why having both the faint and fake out option on, on uh, Weavile, two priority attacks that really open up the game for you in certain situations, can just be a, a real head mess for uh, your opponent. Absolutely. And that's why uh, Hit on Top is so valuable as well. It's got that Intimidate, it's slightly, it's slightly bulkier than um, Weavile, but still a lot of people run it with focus sash. But you've also got access to both fake and fake out as well. Right. And it's just invaluable. It is. So this first turn could play out very differently from the last one. I don't think Steven's going to let the same thing happen again. And you do see Kang's got Mega Ball here. Is it going to go for a fake out? Is it going to go for a power up puncher with her? Let's see, Aaron. Let's see. So we're going to see the feint coming out from Weevil going Once directly again. onto the Smeargle. Is it going to be the same play exactly oh again? God. Wow. <laughs> Steven is just going to let this Smeagol go down once more. And what is Kangaskhan going to do here? Is he going to go for the power-up punch once again? <laughs> is it going to be a repeat of game two? We are in game two, guys. <laughs> I, think we've, uh, I think we've actually looped this feed from somewhere else. It, it feels that way right now. So there we go. Weavile is going down here, but the job that he wanted, Christian wanted it to do is done. Yeah. Smeagol is gone. So uh, now Groudon, again, full HP, managed to pick up a really um, good amount of damage onto Kangaskhan at the cost of a plus two. But, I mean, we're in exactly the same position that we were before. Are we yeah. seeing Bronzo <laughs> come here now? Yeah, we most likely, honestly. Uh, I think uh, if you bring in Groudon, then Christian just brings in to Salamence, and I think this literally feels like a repeat of the last game. Like, should we just play our commentary over from that? <laughs> oh, I, don't, I don't know if we're needed here, but no. So we've got the uh, Intimidate coming out from Salamence here. Gonna take Kangastan back down to only plus one from the power-up punch. But um, now... Are you going to do exactly the same plays that you made in game two? Or are you going to mix it up? This is the thing. Right, right. We know that Flamethrower will not pick up the knockout on, on Bronzong, even with um, additional Hyper Voice damage. Maybe he goes for a double edge and Flamethrower, but it doesn't look like it's going to pick up enough damage either. Right, and so that's interesting. You could also protect your Groudon here, knowing now that Bronzong has that Aka Berry, and just go for a Hyper Voice to knock out Kangaskhan. Because then, when Groudon comes in from Steven's end, it actually can't pick up the one-hit knockout onto Groudon, and suddenly, you know, yeah, that just becomes so much scarier. So that's something, uh, that's a play I think that I might consider if I'm Steven here, uh, or if I'm Christian, excuse me. But uh, Salamis is going to Mega Evolve. Let's see if this is just a repeat of game two. Play so by we're going to see the Mega Evolution coming out now. So Mega Salamence is going to raise its speed. It's going to become really powerful on both the attack and special attack spectrum. <laughs> and we're going to see the Sucker Punch onto Groudon, which is exactly what happened last turn. Are we going to see the Hyper Voice coming out from uh, Salamence? We do. So Kangaskhan is going to go down this turn. Bronzong going to take a little bit of chip damage. And are we seeing the Flamethrower? Or we're we just going to see a big eruption. Let's see, it's going to be a rupture. There we go. So he's trying something different here. The Ocker Berry is going to be cropped, and we're going to have to see how much damage it's going to do with that, with that damage-reducing berry. It's going to do a fair amount, leaving it with just under half HP, but now Trick Room's up. That literally looked like the exact same amount yeah. of damage you took from the last game. So the first two turns, I played out exactly the same, other than Flamethrower uh, and Eruption being used interchangeably. But now Groudon's going to come back in. But you know, uh, I think Steven maybe realizing, okay, that almost worked out last time. I just might have to go for a Gyro Ball this time on the Switch. And uh, I think it actually would have been really beneficial for Christian to just have protected his crowd on there. I think that's a relatively risk-free play. You don't really lose much on it. Um, and now, you know, he has to face the awkward position of the fact that once again, his Groudon is in Precipice Blade's KO range. Mm -hmm. uh, so maybe we see the same thing, right? Maybe Groudon switches out into the Xerneas. Yeah. But then it's a question now, you know, if that's the case, then Steven's Groudon can't hit Christian Salamence, and Salamence is going to be able to get a free attack off. But uh, looking at that HP, Bronzong looks a little bit healthier than last time, so I don't suspect a double edge can knock it out. Let's see if we see a switch out or just a protect here. Yeah, so if you're Steven, considering what happened in the last game, do you set up gravity here? to uh, make sure that your Precipice Blades hits, but then obviously if it's gonna follow down the same route, then uh, Christian can stall out your Trick Room and come back in and hit with Precipice Blades later on. Right, right. 
Uh, there are definitely a lot of mind games right now. Salomon's still sitting pretty healthy, it's, and it's a pretty good option against Groudon, uh, you know, with Hyper Voice and Double Edge. But uh, at this time, you know, if you're Christian, you have to count your Trick Room turns properly. We don't see any switch outs here, just the first Protect coming out. So there goes Groudon, he's going to protect and avoid any damage. And there goes that Gravity from Steven. He's prioritizing the big damage from Precipice Blades, and it's going to do a lot to the, Sal the Salamence as well. So we're going to see the Precipice Blades coming out from Steven's Groudon. It's going to do a lot of damage to the Salamence. Probably should leave it just under half HP. We saw it in the last match. There we go, leaving with just 86 HP left. Double Edge is going to come out now as well. Onto the Groudon. <laughs> So setting it up for later on in the game as yep. well. <laughs> and uh, I think we've seen this before. I, I, has anything been different? <laughs> I, think, Other that, than I think they accelerated some turns yeah, to yeah. bring it forward. I think double edge. I think he protected Salamence last time instead of going straight for the double edge. Right. I mean, now this is the big play, right? You kind of have to switch Groudon out yep. into Xerneas and yep. protect Salamence. But if you're Steven, you can just call that and go for the Gyro Ball. Well, here we go. So Groudon will be leaving the field. Xerneas is going to come in now. So we're going to see a Gyro Ball coming out from the Bronzong to pick up the uh, the knockout onto the Xerneas. Fairy Aura activating, but it might not stick around for too long. Here comes the, the protect from Mega Salamence, stalling out that trick return, just making sure that he doesn't get enough damage off. There goes the Gyro Ball. He knew that Xerneas would be coming in. So that's going to do a fair amount of damage there, leaving uh, about two thirds left. And the Precipice Blades is going to come out as well. Big damage from Steven's side of the field. Can it knock it out? Oh. No! Nine HP! <laughs> And because of that survival, I think we're actually going to see the game play out the exact same way. Now you just protect Xerneas, sacrifice your Salamence, bring in Groudon, protect Groudon, Precipice Blades for the win. I don't think there's really anything maybe Steven can do to play uh, around that, unless he has something like a substitute on his Groudon. So you heard it here first, guys. Aaron has called how this game is going to end. Are we going <laughs> to see Aaron the Psychic Zeng? make it through and get all the predictions right. I'm trying to think, you know, what could he do? And I think in the last game, if anything, at least uh, Steven could have put himself in a better position. Maybe he forgot gravity was up as well. If you protect your Groudon and try to stall out gravity since it should end shortly after, then at least kind of force the Precipice Blade's chance to miss. But then uh, since gravity was up the last game, all Christian had to do was Precipice Blade. So uh, that was, you know, maybe a damage roll on Xerneas. And yep, we are just going to see Xerneas protect. Yeah, so Xerneas is going to protect. We're going to stall out. This is the third term in Trick Room. So we're going to stall out Trick Room here. We're going to see a double effect coming out from Salamence there. And um, we're going to see Hypnosis coming out from Bronzong onto the Salamence. Precipice Blade is not going to be able to do any damage this turn. And Christian is understanding what he needs to do to make sure the Trick Room ends. Yeah, absolutely here. Um this is actually kind of interesting, actually. I don't agree with the double protect play on Christian's end. And the reason why I say that is because you should just let your Salamence get in so you get your Groudon in safely and it's guaranteed to turn up uh, to protect. Uh, yeah. Instead, Christian gambled with that. And now the thing is, uh, it, you know, you can potentially, I'm trying to think, like maybe, maybe it doesn't matter, but uh, it's in the position where, like, now you don't necessarily get your Groudon in for free. Like, maybe Steven doesn't knock you out here. Maybe he goes for a Hypnosis. Although, then again, looking at it, Double Edge did over 50% to Groudon. So I guess if you're a Christian, uh, you maybe just go for a Double Edge and a Geomancy last ditch. Uh, and, you know, just if Steven knocks something out. On the off chance, right? right? Yeah, yeah. If Steven knocks something out, then your Groudon comes back in safely. But, yep, he's not going to knock it out, hoping, like, to maybe set up Trick Room again. Although, I think it's still going to be really difficult. Uh, we do see the Hypnosis connect. <laughs> So Bronzong is going to put Salamence to sleep. Salamence obviously will take its first turn of sleep this turn as yep. well. So Moonblast coming out from Xerneas here. It's going to target down the Bronzong. Not going to be able to do that much damage because it's unboosted. It's going to take it down to the red though. Salamence taking its first turn of sleep and Trick Room is going to end. Yeah, and I think because of that Moonblast damage, it ends up not mattering. Another Moonblast will most likely knock out Bronzong. It could come down to maybe, once again, now it's like a Groudon versus Groudon. Do you hit your Precipice Blades? But uh, I think, like, Christian didn't need to go for that double protect. I think if you just sack the Salamence there, then you get the Groudon in for free, and that's exactly yeah. what you need. And uh, with, you know, gravity being up, I mean, sure, it comes down to maybe whether it hits or not. And actually, Salamence Ooh, wakes first up first term wake up there. Big double edge coming out. It's going to target down the Groudon. It's going to, oh, survive with just a sliver of HP. Moonblast coming out from... Uh, Xerneas, it's going to target down the Groudon as well, and that is all Steven's offensive pressure leaving the field. Yeah, I mean, the, the scary thing there is, like, Steven actually could have won if he just got a double protect there and yep. was able to set up Trick Room again. And so, uh, so, are we actually going to see, we are going to see Christian uh, be able to defeat Christian, or, or Steven. Christian defeating Christian <laughs> in the mirror. No, but unfortunate for Steven there. Obviously, Christian losing that first game, but managing to bring itself, uh, bring himself back into it for games two and three. Yep. And that is the that is the mark of someone um, who's getting more experienced, is becoming a, a good player, is that they can uh, adjust to losing that first match and then be able to um, make sure that they go into um, future matches with a bit more understanding. Yeah, absolutely. And 
I don't know, I thought maybe it would have made more sense for Christian, like, to target the Bronzong there. Like, he was relatively fortunate that Steven didn't go for the wing. Like, you know, if you protect your Groudon, you get the trip room up, then you actually just lose the game there. Whereas it's like, unless Bronzong has protect, in which it almost never does. I guess maybe he didn't want to deal with the chance of Precipice Blades missing, but I don't know. Like, uh, I think that if he just sacrifices Salamence earlier, Groudon comes back in for free. It doesn't matter in the end, he is able to pull out a very impressive 2 1 victory over a very slow competitor, Steven Morioka. Yeah, so do you feel like um, both players sort of going through the motions in that third match just kind of put the game in Christian's hands? Yeah. It felt like that. From, like, from my point of view, um, Steven should have tried to mix things up a little bit more, um, protect the Smeargle a bit better, because that was such a powerhouse for him in that first round. Absolutely, yeah. And, you know, games two and three literally played out the same way, and, of course, the uh, somewhat low damage roll there, I think... Uh, Steven was expecting the Gyro Ball Precipice Blaze combination to knock out, but Xerneas's are tend to, uh, you know, nowadays they are built, uh, built on the more bulkier spectrum. Yeah, so Steven Morioka unfortunately is now um, at four losses. Yeah. Yeah, which is a shame for him. I mean, um, he is a very experienced player, and this won't be the last time we, we see him. I'm sure he'll be back for other seasons, especially moving into uh, VGC 17, Yep. which will be incredible to watch. But um, Christian obviously must be feeling pretty good that he's managed to play such uh, a high-level competitor and learn so much and basically just kind of show himself. Yeah, absolutely. Unfortunately, I think both of these players are actually eliminated from day two contention at this point, but still an exciting set there. I thought uh, we saw kind of Christian being able to adapt and uh, making some really smart plays. But um, yeah, I, that's the that's the thing as well. I mean, like even, even though uh, both of them may be out of contention for day two, uh, they've still got at least this experience to soak in the world's atmosphere, play against players that they might not be able to play against too often, and um, really just try and develop their game. Absolutely. Because, I mean, there are transferable skills, right? There I are. mean, between seasons, we saw players who have performed really well in previous formats coming back, especially from 2010 to 2016, a lot of players in the US returning from that sort of era of Pokemon to uh, kind of have a, another hurrah with the legendary Pokemon. Yep, and so that is going to conclude this round between Christian and...